Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to find one third of a square. So you can do this anywhere and um, you can, basically all you need is a straight edge and maybe a piece of paper. Or you can also do it on some sort of program if you want to, but that kind of defeats the purpose because you can automatically find one fifth of the square if you have some sort of measuring tool. And also, I don't like, before we start this video, I'd like to point out that this is a remake. So, I made some old videos about this earlier, but I felt that they were just kind of bad. So, I'm remaking these videos. If you really want to watch the old videos, you can go onto my channel and watch those old videos. Which might be a little bit bad. I don't get why you would want to watch the old videos. But anyways, let's get started with the video. So... First things first, you're going to want to fold a diagonal throughout the square. And I know that's a bad line, so this fixes it. And then what you're going to do is fold one half of this square right here. Next, you're going to connect this point to this point and form a line. Whoops. Okay, and once you finish that, this intersection point right here is really important because if you fold just one line on top of this intersection point like this and one line through this intersection point like this, you can see that this is one third of the square and this is also one third of the square. And I'm going to be proving this later on. And if you want, if you still don't believe me after the proof, you can obviously see it in this like graph thing because I have a this is literally a perfect graph, and you can see that this is 2, and this is 4, this like length right here, and this length is 2. So obviously, this is one third of the square, since you can literally look at the graph lines. Now let's go on to the proof. So I'm just going to use the same diagram because it's already pretty clear. First, we're going to start by using similar triangles. and. If you notice, there are some transversals going through parallel lines. You can notice this one right here, and you can also see this one right here. So both of those are transversals going through these two parallel lines, the same parallel lines. And this means that their alternate angles must be equal. So these are obviously equal. And if you've already taken geometry, then this might seem pretty obvious to you. And also vertex angles from the, that are opposite of each other's are also equal. So we can point out that these are equal. And these triangles look like they have corresponding angles. And they actually do, because we've just proved it. Which means that these two triangles, right here and right here, are similar triangles. And this means that the ratios of their sides are equal, and the ratios of their altitudes are equal. Their altitudes are right here, because We've already pointed that out. And this means that their areas are the ratio squared, which we actually don't need in this problem, in this uh, video today. So first, let's just start by calling, after this, let's start by calling this side of the square x. And since we know that this right here, this thing right here is 1 half x, we can just call it 1 half x right here. So if this is 1 half x and the whole side of the square is x, then this has to be x, this whole thing. And since we notice that those two triangles are similar triangles, and their sides are in the ratio 1 to 2, 2 to 1, whatever you want it to be, 1 to 2 or 2 to 1, the smaller triangle is 1 and the larger triangle is 2. So this means that their altitudes are also in a ratio of 1 to 2. So, let's just call the altitude of the small triangle y. This means that the altitude of the larger triangle must be 2y, because the two triangles are in the ratio 1 to 2, since they're similar triangles. This means that the sum of, their, the, sum of the two altitudes is 2y plus y also equal to the side of the square, the side length of the square. Because if you haven't noticed, this is the same as this. So solving for y, we have 
3y equals x, and therefore, oops, y is x over 3. And since y is x over 3, therefore, the altitude is one-third of the side of the square. And therefore, this must be one-third. And similarly, we can prove that this is also one-third with some other logic. But for today, we won't prove that this is one-third. We'll just prove that this is one-third. But anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. This video was kind of confusing if you haven't taken geometry, but hopefully you've taken geometry and actually decide to watch this video and take it seriously. If you just came here for the first part, then you should have been, you should have just exited this video on me after the proof started. But anyways, I also have other videos on how to fold a square into five equal parts and how to fold a square into n equal parts. So you can basically fold a square into how many parts you want. But that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and make sure to subscribe and watch my other videos.